for those who who are looking after themselves and trying to work out how you can continue working, you might be approaching retirement. We do this regularly on the program. We talk about how you can fund your retirement and all of us start to look at all of this. So I've got Josh Funder here, who's one of our sponsors here. He's talked about this from Household Capital, but this is about at its core, accessing the equity in your home. So you've got some equity in your home, you're looking at the moment at your investments, your super, interest rates are down, how do you then continue on and and continue your lifestyle? And if you access the equity in your home, say you get the money and you go and spend it, that's not going to be much good. So let's talk about the products they have because I think this is going to be fascinating. And if you've got some questions, you can jump on the phone, 131873. Josh, good evening. John, thanks for having me on the show. Yeah, you'll get those numbers too, so you might uh, be able to roll in. But apart from the <laughs> apart from know, the fingers crossed strategy for retirement, let's think about how it can work for yeah, most people. Yeah. So look, and this is this is people who've got a home. They've That's got right. they've, they they own their home. They love their home. They're living in their home, and I reckon there'd be a lot of people, either themselves or members of their family, knowing that as interest rates have tracked down, it's become very very difficult. So what do you do? Well, John, it's a very common problem. Australian retirees enjoy very long and healthy and active lives. Now, we can celebrate that, but how do we come behind retirees and make sure they've got enough money to fund all of their retirement? And for most people, they've got the pension, but that's not enough. And people who are retired now or about to retire got 3% super halfway through their working lives. Now, that was a good program for people who got 9% through their whole working lives, but it's not enough for baby boomers or people who are retired now. So between the pension and super, they haven't got enough to fund 30 years in retirement. And that's where the homes come in, because baby boomers have been very savvy. They've saved quite a lot, but they've saved in their homes. And now, to fund their retirement, they need responsible long-term access to their home equity to complement the super and their pension, and then they can get through and live the lifestyles that they expect and that they deserve. Okay, and, and so you've you've got the house there, and of course there's always the option of going and selling it, but you don't yeah. want to no. you don't want to sell the house. You like living in the house, and you might be thinking, all right, well, uh, I want to pass this on yeah. to to my family. It may have some uh, it may have uh, some some debt attached to it, but it doesn't matter. The fact is, I I'd like to hand it on, but I'm not going to try and crimp my retirement. It might be that your your mother and father or your grand parents are in this situation so so there are different ways of doing this and there are you know tips and traps as we've talked about when we talk about superannuation so what do you what do you offer how does your system work so look there's two main parts to it but all of those things you said are potential needs that retirees face on a regular basis and it's not just one it could be a range when you've got most of your savings in your lifetime in your home and you don't want to downsize when the home is right for your retirement, to bring your family together, for you to use the spare room for your grandchildren, you want another 10, 20 forever years in your family home. But at the same time, you might want to top up your super and make sure you can draw down that an extra income on top of the pension. You might have a mortgage going into retirement that you need to pay off because you don't want to pay that monthly out of your retirement income. The other thing about a mortgage is you can get evicted. It's, it's, it's recourse debt. Yeah. You want to make sure you can live in your home as long as you like. But there are other things people need to think through. If your home is going to be your home for the next 20 years, do you need the new kitchen or do you need the stair rail or the shower rail to make sure it's age appropriate? Yep. And then finally, a lot of baby boomers want to stay in their home. They want to give to their kids as well. They don't want to wait until they're 90 to give to their kids. It's too late. So being the bank of mum and dad is a real aspiration for a lot of baby boomers. But you don't want to deplete your superannuation. You don't want to raid the kitty to do Mm. it. And so giving part of your home equity to your kids for their first home buyer's deposits, and often it's for your grandchildren for their school fees, those are really important uses that mean you can stay at home, do some of those important retirement funding, retirement housing, and bank of mum and dad stuff, and at the same time leave enough for your kids at the end. Okay, so so this is in, this is interesting because look, when, when I heard about this, I thought, all right, well, this is just about accessing the equity in your home, maybe putting it into superannuation so that you can top up your own yeah. income. But what you've just said, for instance, is you might have kids, or in many cases, it'll be grandkids, where they've they know that the the, the couple's struggling with say school yeah. fees. Yeah. And so you think, all right, well, we can access some of the equity in the in the family home, which ultimately is going to be passing down right. there uh, to help them with the kids' fees. You can do that, can you? Yeah. It's a really um, simple conversation to have when you get it crystal clear. Would you like to give to your kids now when they need it most mm-hmm. or grandchildren? 
Get them in the right school, lifetime earnings. Get them in the right home, accommodation and savings. You can also leave later, but it's an open conversation between the generations. It's not an either or. So that's an important thing. The main thing here, and in our experience, customers are coming to our website, they're coming to our customer calculator. Customers are being very conservative. They're only using as much equity as they need, half as much as they could. And they're using that for two or three very different purposes. They're topping up their super and giving to their kids, fixing their home. So what we're finding is people are really actively personalising and customising the equity they need to meet a variety of different long-term yep. retirement needs. And what that also tells us is they've got a very clear idea about their plans for the future and they're taking active choice to manage their retirement. Okay, so if I just pluck a figure out of the air and I know, for instance, I think, and uh, I hope I've been listening when we talk superannuation on the program, I think you can put uh, $300,000, this is non-concessional, into your super. So you could access $300,000, say, if it was you had that equity in the home, you could put that into your superannuation to top the superannuation up. Is that one of the things people can do? Yes, John, and all your listeners will be absolutely red hot on this. You could, but you'd never go over the assets test for the full pension because you don't want to lose the full pension. Uh-huh. All right. So retirees are very savvy. So a couple have got a assets test for the full pension of about $383,000. Yes. A lot of retirees uh, retire with a lot less than that. In fact, the ASFA data would tell you that over half of Australian retirees retire with less than $200,000. So for a couple, they could put another 183 in their super, keep the full pension, but then they might need to pay off a mortgage, they might need to fix the home. Yep. There's a range of ways you can top up your super, yep. preserve your super, and meet your other but needs. keep it below that amount that then yeah. uh, affects the pension. Yeah, look, the pension's important. It, yeah. it, it goes And you've forever. worked your it's life, indexed. you've paid tax. Yeah, you've paid tax. Your super, you've been forced to save, and that's important but you didn't get the benefits of that throughout your working career. Mm. But just think, a lot of people now bought their homes 40 years ago mm. with the first two, three, four years of their income because it was so affordable back then, and they've paid off that mortgage. Now, that's a really savvy saving strategy, but with another 25 years to live in retirement, you've got to draw on those savings to get your lifestyle. So, so that's into super. So we've talked about that. We that's know one of many it uses. It can be up to 300, but we know you then got to yeah. look at that interaction with the... Red the hot on the pension. All right. So the kids' school fees, we've talked about that. So you, you, you gift that to your kids. You can give them that, can you, as right. a, and pay for those school fees? That's right. And as you'd know, being so financially savvy, if you, Please. If you pull it out of your home... Your home is capital gains yep. free. Of if you course. pull it out of your home, it becomes an asset, unless you consume it within 90 days. Yes. So paying for your grandchildren's school fees is a form of yes. consumption. Yes, that's right. And there are gifting laws. When people are transferring their assets, um, some people get financial advice, and that's important mm. on certain things, particularly when they're investing in a portfolio. You need to get financial advice to get that right over the long term. But you can gift to your kids within certain limits. You can always renovate your own home. That's investing in your own home. That's right. And that's capital gains. And, free. And, the ha- and, and you're happy. A part of your happiness is the home then becomes you know oh. nicer and you're spending a lot of time in the home. Well, it's even better than that. It's not just your lifestyle. People are passionate about that. It doesn't just bring your family together. People actually live longer when they live at home. Of course. And if you roll forward to the end of retirement, in-home care is important. Everybody wants to stay at home as long as yeah. they can. Nobody really wants to go into aged care. And funding both in-home care and the transition to aged care in Australia is effectively underfunded. If you've got a couple and they're 85, and the the grandpa's going into aged care because he's getting sick Mm -hmm. a bit earlier, mum might live another 10 years at home. Currently, if that deposit for the aged care facility is $500,000 or more, Mm -hmm. that family can't come together and fund that sort of amount of money. But home equity can. So it provides solutions at the start, during the middle, and at the end of retirement. And they're flexible to give people choice to meet their needs. All right. How does the home equity work, though? So here I am. I've got a house that's worth this X amount of dollars. And I thought I want to uh, to access uh, 10% of X uh, in equity. So what do I do? How does it work? So, look, it's important to roll through this. Say you're 65 and you're retiring. There are limits on how much home equity you can borrow now so that you've always got enough for later on and it's responsible. And this is very strongly protected by ASIC, by legislation, and it's very hard to get it wrong, except if you use it for short-term consumption. You want to make sure you're funded for your long-term retirement. But at 65, we would say you could lend 20% of your home equity. Yep. Now, a lot of people in the uh, middle and outer ring of suburbs in Sydney and Melbourne have homes between $700,000 million. Yep. So say you've got a million-dollar home and you're 65. There's an extra $200,000 that you can use to fund your long-term retirement. For most people, that's almost as much again as super. So you can almost double super, and then you can work out whether you need to 
top up your super itself, give to your kids, pay off that mortgage, uh, fund aged care. So it's very flexible, but it's an important part and it's almost double again super, yep. and that helps people give a lot of choice and flexibility. And, and you're borrowing the money, and then and you're getting the money, and That's then right. that that then uh, is is amortised later on, so 20 years down yep. the track, how does it That's work? That's right. Like it, that. it, it, it's straightforward and simple, but you have to be, and we should all insist on being transparent. It's a loan. Yep. It's limited in the amount, so it's safe. Yep. Now, you don't have to pay it off monthly, so you can improve your retirement income and access the capital. It compounds, it, 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 it accrues, but the important protections you've got is you can never be moved out of your home for simply staying on yes, at home. Yes. There's no default for missing payments, there's no default for living in your home throughout your retirement, and you can never owe more than the value of your home. So those are important protections that mean this is the retirement appropriate way to access the home equity. This has got the protections you need. And it's also designed in a way to improve your income, your funding, and your choice. Okay, fantastic. All right, so um, I guess that's we've had a couple of real-world examples of how this has worked. Have you got a, a typical one that you you can sort of say? What? Yeah. Well, look, we had a woman in the uh, central coast of New South Wales mm. come into us the other day, mm. and it's an example of how our team has real passion to change the lives of retirees and make a difference. Mm. She came in and she had an interest-only mortgage with one of the big four banks. And she was really proud to pay that. She could pay that from her retirement income because it was a small amount. Mm. And the bank called her up and said, we think we'll call that in. We think you'll start paying principal and interest. And when you're 80 and you start paying principal and interest, she was going to have to pay an extra $27,000 a year. Now, you think a lot of people are on the lowest rate loans with the banks. This lady was paying 5.9% interest. Really? Out of her retirement income. Really? And she was about to get crucified in her retirement income by having to pay an extra $27,000 a year. She was 80. Yep. Now, the idea that the bank had put that loan in and put her in that situation is a problem. That's a a, a Mm. question for our system. Mm. What I'm proud to say is we were able to make sure that she could have the flexibility. We reduced her rate by 0.5%, Yep. which we're really proud to do. We've got the lowest available rate by a long way for home equity access. But she was then able to continue very proudly, paying off monthly the interest she would have had yep, to pay. Yep. That loan didn't accrue because she was paying interest on it. Yep. But she had guaranteed occupancy of her home. Nobody could evict her for a home for not paying that mortgage. Yeah. She had flexibility to miss a payment, uh, pay it off if other people in her family had a bequest to her. So what we enabled her to do is to continue according to her plan, yep. give her choice. She also had a home that was worth enough that she could draw more equity if more she equity. had a speed bump. One of the other things we haven't talked about that's really important is if you go through retirement on the pension and on your superannuation income, that's good, but in 30 years of retirement, you're going to hit some speed bumps. You're going to need a new car. Yep. You might need a new roof. Uh, we've had people come to us and they've had uh, funding, that they've had medical expenses that Medicare won't need. Yep. So you've got a plan for contingency funding. For that stuff. And, and you've got to be able to draw that down. And you can draw it down. That's right. Okay, look, people can find out more details. Very interesting. Householdcapital.com.au. That's very easy. Householdcapital.com.au. They can find out more about what we've just been discussing. You've got a number, 1300 622 100, or they can just see that number on the website. That's easy to remember. Householdcapital.com.au. Very interesting. Thank you so much, Josh. John, we've helped a few people on. tonight, and I've learned a bit as well. Fantastic. Josh Funder there from Household Capital.